Okay, let's take a look at those transport actions. So we'll go into our gallery here and choose a different Flash movie. We'll choose the one that says Indigo Clouds Swift. I'm just going to put this in the center of the page roughly. And okay, we're going to create a couple of buttons now. So we'll just use label objects. First one I'm going to create, I'm going to call Stop. And in the Actions area, I'm just going to apply a Flash Stop action. Okay, so I've gone into the Action Wizard and I'm choosing Flash Stop. And of course, by default, it grabs our flash value here because it's the only object on the page. But if you had multiple objects, you would want to grab your value from the pull down menu here. So I'll press finish, then I'll press OK. Now I'm going to bring that down here and press Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to change the text on the second object to say play. And I'm going to change the action from a flash stop action to a flash play action. I'm just going to do that manually by typing it in there. Now I'll press OK. I'll put these two buttons here on the stage and I'll quickly align them here and we're ready to go. I'm going to press F5 to preview our project and if I just let the movie play you'll see what it does. It has its little text effect and then it stops. If I press play it's going to restart because that's going to send a play uh, message to the flash movie and that's what it does. Okay, So if I press play and then I press stop for example there you'll notice the movie stops the effect stops everything freezes if I press play can commences going if I press stop it stops so these are directly related to the transport in the movie as you can see here just by using the flash stop and flash play actions we're able to do this now let's take a we'll close down this application and then we'll take a look at the flash seek action so I'm going to duplicate this play label. I'm going to go in here and change it to say seek and in the actions tab here I'm just going to erase this action and set a new one. So I'll click on the add action button and choose flash seek. Now I'm just going to set up an arbitrary value here. As you can see there's different seek types, seek beginning, seek end, seek back forward specific. So we'll choose seek specific and then we'll just actually just choose a frame here. So we'll choose maybe how about frame 25? And we're just using it basically to prove a point. Um, obviously, you would use this value in a more meaningful way in your projects and presentations. For example, you would have some type of an event happening within your Flash movie, and you could relate that here to a seek action. So we'll press Finish, then we'll press OK. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and align these little buttons here and move them over. And we'll go ahead and press F5 to preview. Now, what's going to happen with this Seek button is it's going to send us to frame 25. So if I click on it, you'll see it sends us to this frame, and it stops there. If we press Play, it'll go ahead and play. So, for example, if I stop our movie, so I'm going to press Play to restart it. If I stop it here and press Seek, watch what happens. You'll see it ends that effect because that's right at the point where it's at after frame 25. Okay, and then we can press Play and continue on with it. So that's the seek action. Okay, I'm going to close down our application and we'll take a look at the final um, transport related action here, which is the load action. So I'll duplicate another one of these labels. Oops. Just go ahead and select one and duplicate it. Move it over here. I'm going to call this one load. And I'm going to go to my actions tab, get rid of this action, go click the add action button, and select the flash load action. I'm going to double click that. As you see here, it gives me a file name area, which we're familiar with from some of the other actions. We'll go ahead and select from our gallery a different Flash movie. And as you can see here, we can preview different Flash movies. So let's go ahead and select Indigo Glitter. We'll press OK. And now we can choose here whether to play it automatic and loop it. And we'll actually press True and True for these two options here. OK? And then we'll press Finish. We'll press OK. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just align these little objects down here to make it look neat. And we'll go ahead and press F5 to preview. And just by way of review, we've got our stop action here, our play action, and additionally, we've got our seek action. Okay, and now we've got an additional one here, which is load. And when we click this, you'll see it loads a different Swift file into that Flash object. Okay? So those are the transport-related actions for the Flash object.